tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou katoa. Ko Andrew Judd tuku ingua. On the 8th of October, 1769, Captain James Cook of the British Royal Navy and in command of the HMS Endeavour sailed into a bay in the North Island of New Zealand. And this day was to be the first encounter between the indigenous people of New Zealand, the Māori, and the British. Māori were to name Europeans Pākehā. 71 years later, on the 6th of February, 1840, the British Crown and most Māori chiefs were to sign a treaty known as the Treaty of Waitangi. This treaty was to be the founding document between two cultures and laid out the partnership principles to build a new nation whilst protecting the indigenous rights of the Māori. The treaty was in fact written in two languages, Te Reo Māori and English. The two texts did not translate to match each other. Following the treaty signing, New Zealand saw mass European immigration and the colonisation of New Zealand. And with a greed for Māori land, settler New Zealand governments passed legislation against Māori, which contravened human rights. Disputes led to war. The consequence to Māori was mass Māori land confiscation and theft by the Crown. This forced Māori into social and economic deprivation and isolation. Continuous New Zealand governments would ignore and breach the Treaty of Waitangi. And to this very day in New Zealand exists recent legislation that works only against Māori. Someone once said to me, Marys are lazy. Marys fill our jails. The Māori elite wrought the system for their own gain. And the rest, they just want social welfare handouts. Marys are lucky they got saved by the British. And their language is all but dead. And I'm sick and tired of hearing about the past. They've got to get over it and move on. In any case, we're all one now. Do you know who said that to me? I said that to me. My name is Andrew Judd. And I am a recovering racist. In 2013, I was elected mayor of the New Plymouth District. And one of my first challenges was the question of Māori representation on council. You see, in New Zealand, councils are required under the Local Government Act to include Māori in the decision-making of councils. And one of the options to fulfil this requirement is to establish an elected seat on council for Māori, just as we have elected seats for Māori in our parliament. Having tried and failed to secure Māori voices at council subcommittees, it was this option of an elected Māori seat that our council voted to establish. This decision ignited an angry community response. A response that not only I recognised I identified with. Do you know until I was elected the mayor, well, I'd never set foot on him, had I? I had no understanding or appreciation of Māori values, customs or protocols. Gee, I, I couldn't even pronounce basic Māori New Zealand place names. In becoming the mayor, well, I was engaging with Māori in a Māori environment. I was witnessing the challenges that exist for Māori, the consequences of colonisation that are so very real for Māori. Their eyes spoke of the intergenerational trauma as I heard of the full history of New Zealand's colonial past. And as I took all this in, I was having an internal conflict. This new experience with Māori was at odds with my deep-seated belief of who I thought Māori were and are. My sanitised colonial view of New Zealand's history was getting challenged to the core as I discovered I knew nothing. How could this be? Well, let's be honest. In mainstream New Zealand, we raise our children to have no knowledge of New Zealand's full colonial past. We don't talk about it. We don't teach it. We simply demand that Marys get over it.
I decided to challenge myself. Ask myself some deep inner personal questions about this. Could I, as a New Zealand born and raised Pākehā, or could anyone non Māori, truly explain or define the it in the statement levelled at Māori, get over it? I hadn't grown up in New Zealand, having to deal with the emotion and the knowledge that my ancestral land had been stolen by my government, my treaty partner, sold off to fund the infrastructure that built a nation that we all enjoy today. To have the crown of today recognise that wrong, but double down by offering a few measly cents in the dollar in compensation. I hadn't grown up in New Zealand, having to deal with the emotion that in all those horrendous statistics against my culture, in health, education, poverty, homelessness, the disproportionate incarceration rates are a direct result of policies put in place from the ideology and worldview of another culture. I hadn't grown up in New Zealand having to deal with the emotion and the knowledge that my native language had been actively denied and removed by the education system. And I hadn't grown up in New Zealand having to experience life as a minority in my own country. No, I can't define or explain the it, because it never happened to me. And yet, without any inner moral dialogue to ever stop and consider my thoughts, my words, or my attitude, I felt I had some right to place an expectation, a judgment onto Māori. An expectation and a judgment that never had to be placed on me. Who did I think I was? The ease at which these questions were deflected was amazing. The comebacks. I didn't want to know about it. I, th I, th I was thinking about it, but there's no consequence for me. Do I care? Life goes on for me. I decided to ask myself why I'd get so angry whenever I considered anything to do with Maoridom. Not just angry. A real anger. I mean, I couldn't look at a Māori flag without feeling somehow intimidated. The, 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 the things I'd say. This is what happened throughout history. Why well, they can't be stuck there forever. It's just one long grievance train. When will enough be enough? Move on, bloody Marys. You know, if what I was thinking and feeling was the truth, why was I so angry? Nothing has ever happened to me personally. Why am I angry? Because if what I think and feel is to the truth, it sets you free, right? It shouldn't make me feel like I feel. What's wrong with me? I deflect. Well, at least when I like Australia. I know, right? What an odd thing to say when you think about that. Because what's that even supposed to mean, right? Right, I'll judge how bad I am, I won't admit how bad I am, but I'll judge how bad I am based on someone who I think is worse. My ultimate place, my get out of having to think about it card. Well, don't blame me. I mean, I didn't steal the land or stop the language. It's not my fault. Well, no, I didn't steal the land or stop the language. But I have remained completely ignorant. An ignorance that drove an attitude that in so many ways justifies what was done, but even worse, continues to colonise. I didn't stop there. I kept saying things to myself around why I was feeling this conflict. Another statement that I would often make, well, we're all one now in any case. But think about this. If we're all one, then let's all be Māori. We're in New Zealand, we're all one, let's all be Māori. Because whose view of one are we? Yes, we're one citizen. But to suggest that we're one is to deny Māori the right to identify and be Māori. Who gave me that right? So what's my culture was my next question of myself. Because I'm not Māori. But I'm not British or English either. I'm a Pākehā New Zealander. What's my culture? 
You know, if I was invited to, to a, a gathering tonight for a meal of uh, cultures from around the world, come dressed in your national costume, Andrew, something that resembles your culture, what would I wear? Black singlet, shorts, red band gumboots? <laughs> well, I'm not a farmer. Rugby jersey. But really, Andrew, I thought deeper than that. Not a sport or a job or iconic products like Buzzy Bees and Tip Top Ice Cream. What are my cultural values? I mean, what do I believe in? What do I stand for? What would I fall for? I certainly grab Māori culture when it suits. Haka before a rugby match. Yeah, it's cool. Pōwhiri, traditional Māori welcoming of foreign dignitaries. Yep, absolutely. But hang on. I don't know how to do a haka, and I don't even know what that means or what they're saying. But we're all one, right? So my community was at odds with this whole question of Māori representation, as indeed was the country. And although New Zealand legislation allows for a council to establish an elected seat for Māori, just as we have elected seats for Māori in Parliament, New Zealand legislation also allows for a community to demand a binding referendum on that decision. No other seat on the council, and there are others, can have binding referendums. Just the Marys. And on the 15th of May 2015, 175 years since the signing of the Treaty of Waitangi, 83% of my community who voted in that referendum said no. Having stood for and championed fairer representation as treaty partners, life was never to be the same. I was in Waitara, a beautiful town in Taranaki, getting some lunch. And as I was at the counter paying for my lunch, this Māori gentleman came up and said, oh, I want to pay for your lunch. I said, well, you don't have to do that. He said, I'd be offended if you don't let me. I saw you walk in and I was too shy to come over. But I had to. Not many stand up for my people. And I'd like to pay for your lunch. Beautiful, humbling moment. And as I thanked him and left, waiting on the pavement was a gentleman who came at me and said, I thought it was you that went in there. Now listen, I voted for you to sort these natives out. And you've mucked it up. And we all hate you for it. Hate you. A kiss and a slap within five minutes from two strangers. <laughs> but a realisation. For I could not judge this angry man. For he is me and I am him. Both Pakiha, with a deep, unjust fear within. I decided to not seek re-election at the end of my term. To be a one-term man. Not because I didn't want to. This was different. This wasn't a question of potholes on roads, art galleries, parks and rates. This was a question of who we are as New Zealanders. How we care and love each other. I couldn't become the bait for hate in an election campaign. Not only do we remain divided, the children are watching, the children are learning. You know, I don't speak on behalf of or for Pākehā. I speak as Pākehā. And in all of those horrendous statistics that we talk about for Māori dim, in health, education, poverty, incarceration rates, Pākehā are the problem. We always have been. We take no ownership of anything into our hearts. You know, we simply point and blame Māori for essentially what not only we did, but what we continue to do. It's bad enough we lie to the world and how horrendously we've treated Māori. What's worse is we lie to ourselves. Pākehā are also the solution. Challenge the fear that someone else has put there. We're not born this way. Truly, truly learn of our full colonial past. Not to name shame or to blame, but to understand. 
to have empathy. Demand of each other that we acknowledge our treaty, that we celebrate, respect our differences. But above all, look into your heart and ask yourself the questions. Because only you can be honest with you. And as the prophets of peace so messaged humanity, he kadoria kita atua e rongarawa, he mona rongo kita fenua, he fakaro pai, kina tangata katoa. Glory to God on high, peace and goodwill to all mankind, no matter who. The words from Tafiti o rongamai and Toho kakahi, parihaka. And on the screen is an image of the dearly departed courier, Fedo Bailey and myself, welcoming us to Parihaka at the end of a three-day peace walk from the office of the council to Parihaka. Do you know, after all the angst in my community, in my country, Māoridom still welcomed us in with open, open arms, love and inclusion. Māoridom, such a beautiful people, a resilient culture, and an example to us all. Te aroha, te wakaponu, me te rangi māori e tātou tātou e. Nō reira, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā tātou katoa. Kia ora.